Okay, so here um, we're going to do some releases for the um, for the foot and the lower leg. So I've got um, a soft spiky massage ball here. I've got a Franklin ball. I've got a half dome foam roller, and I've got a full foam roller. So um, something with the balls with a bit a bit of give. Um, so would be quite nice. And you're going to begin. The first release is for the plantar fascia. So that fascia, that connective tissue on the sole of the foot. And for a minute, you can just go from toes to heel, applying as much or as little pressure as you like. And sometimes I kind of like to think of a rolling pin kind of action. And then going from big toe to heel, second toe to heel, third toe to heel, so on and so forth. And it can be nice just to put a timer on this for a minute. And you can do it for two or three if you so desired. And you could do it sitting down as well. So when you're standing up, it's more load. So sitting down uh, might feel easier if your feet are tender or if your lower back is quite sore or if you sat at a desk. So it's a minute. And then for the second minute, and it's always nice actually to compare and feel the difference between the two and let the brain kind of notice the upgrade. And then the second minute, you're gonna put your heel on the floor and the ball up um, near the toes, but and you're gonna kind of do this side to side idea. So it's like we're getting the baby toe towards the ground. It doesn't have to touch, and then the big toe towards the ground. So the foot's kind of going in an arc kind of shape. And then you could come down a little bit with that ball and do the same again. So for about a minute, and I would do that um, on both feet, and then you can stand and bask in the glory and see what you feel like. You feel like your feet might feel a little more grounded, you might feel more rooted to the earth. And uh, interestingly, if you've got anything going on with the lower back, I'd certainly start with the feet and that will help um, with calves, hamstrings, lower back. Um, so really helpful. The next one is, um, I'll that out of the way. So the next one that we're going to do is a release just using your hands and it's a release for the top of the foot. This is the beginning of the deep front line. Um, so this front line of fascia that comes all the way up through, very helpful for um, uh, if you've had a C-section to start um, to work on this deep front line, especially if you're feeling um, restriction in movement. So hopefully you can see, I'm gonna take this foot so this is what I'm going to do. So this is for the front of the, of, of the top of the foot and also um, up into the shin. So I'm going to bend my toes back to shorten the tissue and then I'm going to put my thumbs in and pull down so it creates a lock and then I'm going to just reach the toes away and slide the thumbs up. So I'm going to bend the toes back, put my thumbs in and pull down to create a lock and as I curl the toes away, my thumbs will slide up towards the leg. So I bend the toes back, push my thumbs in, pull down on the skin to create a lock, and then curl the toes away and kind of massage up. So it's a sliding lock. This is an STR release. And you can go do a few from the big toe, so flex to shorten the muscle, create a lock, and then as you curl the toes away, the thumbs slide up. And you can do this all the way, kind of go from big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth and fifth. So shorten, you can use your hands if you like, lock, curl. Shorten, lock, curl. Again, you could do this for about a minute. And really, really nice um, if you've got any tension in the front of the lower leg or the foot. And again, it's part of that deep front line, so really helpful, um, certainly for C-section scars. So here we are, and you can do the same then on both feet. So that's a lovely release. The next release, let's come up into the lower leg. And um, so you'll notice you have your, your, the shin bone here. So you're gonna go to the side of that shin bone and there's a muscle here. This can be very helpful if you've just started running or if you suffer from shin splints. And again, it's part of the deep front line for C-section, so really helpful. Um, it, this area can be carry quite a lot of tension. 
because during our pregnancy it's very common that our growing bump shifts our weight forwards and even standing and feeling this you'll feel the whole front line light up so really helpful so you can use i should have said a pen uh let me get let's go pen. you could use a pen or a spoon or something to get um some fascial release so fascial is connective tissue and we want to get that slide and glide so all i'm going to do is again i'm not working on the bone i'm just to the side of it i'm just going to start to get that fascia hydrated and moving so fascia lies under the skin and you don't have to apply lots of pressure so this can be really nice again maybe a minute 30 seconds and then when you're doing this kind of stuff, you know, just make sure that the shoulders, the neck, everything else isn't tense. Oh, so you can go into this. And what you could do is use your hand to um, put a bit of tension on that front line and reach the foot away and then do the same idea. So I'm just kind of going up and down and getting some slide and glide back in those tissues. Okay, and again, you could do that on, on both shins, really nice. And you could follow that up with, um, you could follow that up with a little um, rolling. So, the first one I'm going to show you might be like, oh, hallelujah, <laughs> quite uh, a lot of tension there. So, I'll show you two variations. So this one, if you're early postpartum, you might not want, you might not want to do this. Um, so I'm going to put my shins on the roller. And then remember, I don't want to be on the shin bone. So I'm going to turn my legs in a bit so that I'm on the tissue there, the muscle. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is roll. Again, of course, you can see this position is a front loaded position for the abdominal wall. So if you are newly postpartum, uh, maybe go with the second option. This could be a lot on that healing abdominal wall. And you're just gonna roll back and forth. And then you could pause, and then you could just roll a little, or kind of shake your bum a little to the left or the right. So you get a little bit of cross friction there. And back and forth. Now I realize that can be quite a lot if you have a very caring partner. Uh, they may do this next one for you. I wish I had a person here to show you. So you could do one uh, shin at a time and essentially you're lying down like this and then your partner will apply pressure on the roller. You dictate how much you like and then you're going to roll up towards the heart. Then you go back down, no pressure there. Apply pressure, roll up towards the heart. Go back down, no pressure. Apply pressure, roll up towards the heart. And you can angle your leg a little in and just kind of roll over this front section. So really nice for the front of the lower leg. Um, and then we've got um, calves. So calves, the back here. So this, um, the back, the, there's also, we spoke about the front line of tissue. There's also a back line that starts on the bottom of the foot and comes up, so releasing the bottom of the foot with that plant, uh, the foot roll uh, would be really nice to proceed this. It helps the calves, the hamstrings, and sends this whole message of release through the whole back line. So calves, you could do one leg at a time, and you could press down and just start to roll side to side, okay? Again, you apply as much or as little pressure as you like, and from side to side. You could also go into this rolling back and forth and apply as much pressure as you like. But I would apply more pressure as it rolls up towards the heart, then back up. Press down, apply more pressure as it rolls up towards the heart. And then any areas that you go, oh, that's a little bit then you could stay on there and do some smaller little movements. Trick is to go quite slow. You could also put the other leg over. So if you felt that, you know, oh, it's not really doing too much, you could increase and put the other leg on top. And then you could, that applies a bit more pressure. And you, again, you could rock side to side. 
So sometimes we always think about just rolling back and forth. So side to side is really important. And then you could come up and do it here. Again, this is a lot on the wrists and the upper body, so it might not be suitable. Okay, and you could also do a variation here. I'll use this to prop my head on. But I could, you could do this uh, lying down and you could do two at the same time or one leg. So let's just do one leg. So here, I could just side roll side to side like this. And what's really nice actually, you could start up close, kind of up the thigh, up near the knee end, and then you can go side to side. So the, like you're rolling the leg in and you're rolling the leg out, applying a gentle pressure. Then you could go down a little bit more into the belly of the calf and do the same thing, just side to side. So making sure we're getting um, affecting all tissues in the calf. And then you could go a little lower and do the same thing side to side and then you could also do this point and flex so you could find a spot maybe the belly of the calf and you can point and flex the foot and you could also do like a u with the foot so or an arc and then you could also do a little bit of bend and press Okay, so there's all lovely ones that you can do a combination of them all. So lie here if being up on your hands doesn't feel good. So I could go the other leg, side to side. If you could pick three or four points down the back of the leg. And again, you might want to spend, you know, a few seconds on each, 10 to 20 seconds, depending how much time you've got. You could roll back and forth and you could also do both at the same time. So you could press down and you could go side to side and you could do a little calf roll. And again, this is certainly another one where you could lie on your belly and someone could do it for you and they could roll up towards your heart and roll the calves for you. So really nice. The next one is, um, uh, I love this, it's a static, so it's not necessarily a release, but it's a static calf stretch. And I love it because it also works on improving ankle dorsiflexion. So when the foot is pointed, so this is dorsiflexion, that position there, the ankle here. And uh, if I was to look at two things that um, nearly the whole population needs to get better at, it's ankle dorsiflexion, so this angle here, and hip extension, the ability to take the leg back behind us. So this is a static calf stretch. You take one foot, I've got the half dome. You could use a book or roll a towel up. So I've got one foot going uphill and the other foot can step beside. If you feel like, yeah, that feels fine, um, you could stay here. If you feel like there's no stretch, take this foot forward a bit more. You could go forward, it could even step in front. But what I do advise is that you don't go immediately to this one. You don't want to feel like you're pulling tremendously on the calf because it is quite a lot. So, you know, be uh, err on the side of caution. So you can do single like this. This calf stretch, I would say, I would put in as a daily for five to 10 minutes a day. If I was to pick something that's really going to give you lots of bang for your buck. So great at improving ankle dorsiflexion, which we really need for running, walking and definitely squatting. Um, and if the ankle dorsiflexion, when we can increase that, knees are generally happier and hips. So five to 10 minutes every day, and it's a static calf stretch and also kind of affecting positively up into the hamstrings. So you could do, how to get this into your life is when you brush your teeth, two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening, maybe this is when you do this. So you do both feet, okay? Um, and you might notice one is different than another, and that's absolutely fine. So we all have asymmetries and um, love it as well because, you know, for many years we've been wearing a positive heel and our foot has been going downhill a lot of the time. So really great. Um, if you wanted a progression, you could do two feet at the same time. What's important to notice is you're not tripping, for, for, falling forward. So notice your posture here. If you have to strain to be here, then go back to single leg. So again, two to five minutes, you can play around with all of these, again, while you're brushing your teeth, or if you're at the counter and you're chopping your veggies or whatever, you could um, have this. I have a couple of these around the house. 
and I just prop them up. One in the bathroom, I've got one in the kitchen, um, and I do this actually quite a lot. Um, so if you wanted, um, here's another dynamic. Uh, this is a dynamic one now that we're going to go into. So that was static, okay? So hopefully, um, let's see, here. So again, if you don't have a half dome, you can roll up a towel or have a book or your yoga mat. So you've got this foot on the um, going uphill, hands on the wall, and then the other foot, you're just gonna drive the knee forward. Okay, so we're gonna drive the knee forward. So quite dynamic. And then you could also go into this knee swing. So um, I really love this, really nice as a warm up. And then you could do the same on the other side. If you, if this felt like it was too much, here's an option to do this nice dynamic one. So the foot's behind and the focus really is about the foot that's behind. Okay, so I'm going to take it behind and the other foot forwards and I want to keep my heel down on the ground. So I'm going to bring my nose to the wall and I want to keep my heel down on the ground and come back. So nose to the wall. Now I'm bringing my hips with me. I don't want to feel like I'm tipping forward. To increase it, you could just step back, but you want to keep your heel down on the floor. So here we are just going into this forwards plane and then you could also do shoulder towards opposite hand and alternate between the two. Okay, and that just gets a little bit um, of different plane or multi plane on motion. So there's some nice ones for the feet and um, the lower legs. So I hope you enjoy those and you know you might pick out your favorite few and um, and start to integrate them into your life. Okay. Bye-bye.